I hope uh, you remember this, okay? It says internet connection is unstable. Let's uh, go on with it still. Okay, so that after substituting here, okay, we, we saw how uh, 1 by 2j was taken out and the summation was taken along with uh, the complex exponential z bar minus 1, okay? And uh, every summation is in its standard form. That is, n when from 0 to infinity, a bar n form, okay? So with that, we have uh, written this and we also saw the ROCs for both, okay? And this is what we got. And then we uh, tried uh, just taking the LCMs and multiplying the steps. Okay, they appeared like this. So they are in standard box here. If you can take this, this x square, this square gone up. You're left with uh, these two terms. And if you take that common, this is what you'll be able to see. Similarly here, if you take that common in second and third, this is what you'll be seeing. Okay, so this can be expressed as a cos omega naught. Okay, and this can be the a sine omega naught. So here, see, so along with these two, it is sine omega naught. Okay, and this is two cos omega naught because cos omega naught is this. Okay, so that we substituted here, and we saw that ROC is greater than sine omega naught. And uh, <coughs> I had given you this cos omega naught n of n as the time naught. Fine. I hope. Uh, you have uh, solved this. It's very similar to what we have done for sine omega naught n. Already these PPTs are uh, posted in uh, Google Classroom for your reference in PDF format. Okay, you can go through that. You should not find any problem uh, obtaining the X of Z for this particular thing or the sequence. Now, uh, another sequence for which we need to find out the Z transform is unit ramp sequence. What is unit ramp? Unit ramp is n u of n. Okay, it is n for range zero to infinity. So that is unit ramp. Fine. Why it is called as unit ramp? Because its slope is unity. Okay, so that means at n equal to one, it is one. At n equal to two, it is two. At n equal to 3, it is 3. Okay, so that is why it is called as unit ramp. And what is this u of n going here? If u of n is not there, x of n is n from minus infinity to plus infinity. So to limit its range from 0 to infinity, this u of n is accompanying. Got that? Now, we can take the same equation to find out the z transform. Fine. Substitute this here. So, what will be our next operation after we substitute uh, n u of n in this place? What needs to be done? We need to adjust the summation here. Okay, we need to adjust the summation. How do we adjust that? By seeing this u of n. What is u of n? u of n is 1 over what range? Okay, u of n is 1 over. 0 to infinity, so make it 0 to infinity and make this one. So that is what is done in the next step. This is 0 to infinity and over 0 to infinity, u of n is 1, so that is substituted as 1. Okay. Now, this is what we're doing. What did we do? Yeah, n is there, right? Here there is n. So let's take this as z to the power of minus 1 and take this power out. That is what is done. Now how to deal with this. So this is uh, another standard summation that you need to remember now. Till now, n was not there. If n is not there, it is 1 by 1 minus a. Remember that if n is not there, it is 1 by 1 minus so summation n ranging from 0 to infinity a power n is 1 by 1 minus a. But since there is an n along with a, okay, remember this standard summation, okay. 
so that can be written as a by 1 minus a whole square and similarly the condition is a has to be less than 1 and obviously z inverse is less than 1 so let's not bother about it okay so with this new standard summation that you have seen okay how can you write this x of z in the next step okay it's quite simple it's quite simple once we have given you this standard transformation standard summation rather okay you have to remember this, this is the sta second standard summation we are seeing today we are going to see another standard summation okay but before that this is the second standard summation we are seeing okay now yeah now uh, how do we write this see yeah this is how we are going to write fine see here a, a is z inverse so in place of a you need to bring z inverse and 1 minus a 1 minus a means 1 minus z inverse square understand Okay, so this is what your h of z would be. Why why are we doing this? Because there is an n which uh, is happening for the first time. This was this didn't happen uh, till now. Since you have taken uh, a ramp, unit ramp, uh, this is happening. Okay, so this is the standard summation you have to remember. Okay, so how do you find out the ROC? How did they arrive at this particular uh, uh, result? Just try analyze that. How did they get the ROC to be this? Okay, so we need to be good with that. How to find out the ROC? ROC again and again, I am telling you, ROC is region of convergence, and it is the values of z for which x of z is finite. Now tell me, seeing this, when do you think x of z would be finite? There are two. 1 minus z inverse it is 1 minus z inverse into 1 minus z inverse so consider just 1 1 minus z inverse so my this for this to be finite the denominator should not be zero so that means the magnitude of the denominator has to be greater than one so magnitude of the denominator has to be greater than one means it is as good as saying z inverse has to be less than one if z inverse is less than one this is as good as saying one by z is less than one so 1 by z being less than 1 is minus z being greater than 1. So this is the ROC. Okay, further you can see for uh, uh, to eliminating this inverse and put this in the form of z. Okay, so which can be done by taking the LCM. Understand that? So this is how uh, the x of z of unit ramp function is uh, obtained everybody i explain again this is the summation that you have to remember okay this is the summation you have to remember so seeing this standard summation we have written this how have we found out the roc roc is always found out by taking the magnitude of the denominator greater than one there are power of two so it's there are two such one minus z inverse one minus z inverse into one minus z inverse you need not have to take both just take one and analyze okay so it's one minus z inverse the magnitude of one minus z inverse has to be greater than zero which means the z inverse has to be less than one or z greater than one okay so if you simplify this okay so the x of z would look like this again i'm telling you you're not seeing your roc the analysis of roc is not done at the final step it needs to be done at the step where the summation is solved immediately after the summation is solved okay that is where you'll be finding out your ROC get this point so this is uh, the z transform of x of z with ROC z greater than 1 understand that okay now so this is what we have seen so far okay so these are all the standard sequences fine unit sample unit impulse okay 
they, they call the unit impulse as unit sample also because there is one sample that is delta of n. Okay, this is another thing that we can understand, but people are not at all aware of this. So let's not use this anywhere in the exams or uh, internals. Internals you use because yes, uh, I, I can I can understand this, but if in the uh, exam, if the examiner is not aware of this, it would be a problem because this is uh, very rarely used uh, terminology. Okay, so let's not use this terminology. Terminology. So this is what everybody is aware of. So let's go call it as unit impulse only. This is something that we have seen. Okay, how to find the Z transform, how to find the ROC. Unit step, we have positive time unit step, negative time unit step. Okay, so it's both Z by Z minus one, Z by Z minus one only for positive as well as negative unit step. But where is the difference? The difference is in the ROC. Here, ROC is outside the circle with radius 1. Here, ROC is inside the circle with radius 1. Why it is outside here? It is outside here because it is right-sided, the positive side. It is inside the circle because it is left-sided. Okay, so that we need to remember. Outside the circle means it is right-sided. Inside the circle means it is left-sided. Similar thing is happening here. Exponential, we have seen a power n u of n out of the circle with radius a, the ROC. Okay, here inside the circle with radius b, the ROC. Okay, so you, you need to remember all this because if you remember this, we can solve the problems much easily. Okay, so there, there are some the problems, there are some sequences whose Z transforms can be found out uh, by uh, referring to these uh, standard transforms. Understand that? So you need better you remember the sinusoidal sequence we have found out sine omega naught n. This is something that we saw and this is something that we have taken as an assignment. Okay. Unit ram, something that we just saw now. That's n u of n it is z by z minus one square. Okay. Nowhere the denominator has got the square term. Only the unit ramp has. Okay. Now uh, among this uh, the only sample or only example wherein there is finite uh, length is this that's why here we say all z it is entire z plane except zero it is entire z plane except infinity we don't talk about circle here but in rest all uh, the uh, examples we talk about circle because they're all infinite sequences outside the circle with radius one inside the circle with radius one outside the circle with radius a inside the circle with radius b it's all outside the circle with radius one why it is all why the last three we are see, seeing is all outside the circle with radius one why it is outside the circle with radius one because they are all right sided or positive time sequence. Okay, so such uh, understanding one needs to have to make it better. Okay, in your internals and examination. So let's uh, be aware of this fact. Okay, that for left sided it is within the circle and for right sided sequence it is outside the circle. Okay, we talk about circles when we are dealing with infinite sequences. Okay, uh, whereas we don't talk about circles if it is finite sequences. We talk about whole Z, all the Z. Okay, all the Z except zero, all the Z except infinity. So this is how we uh, talk when it comes to finite sequences. Understand that? So with this knowledge, we shall see some more that transform okay so let's go on one by one with uh, some more uh, examples so this is again problem solving it's better you keep noting that and keep solving whatever solution i ask you for okay otherwise i just uh, putting the equations on slide and explaining it uh, would not make it uh, interesting okay so if you have to involve you have to 
or do it yourselves, most of the things. So let's take such activities now. Yeah. Again, the problems on Z-transform. Find the Z-transform of X of N, which is given by alpha to the power minus N, U of minus N minus 1. Okay. Now, you should not mistake this particular sequence for positive time exponential or negative time exponential. No. Why I say that is, see here, for positive time exponential is a far n u of n. For negative time exponential is minus b par n u of minus n minus 1. One thing that you should observe here is, see the powers of this. See the powers of this. The powers of these are positive. Understand? So what's happening with powers of this? This is negative. So you may say that I will not see this, see this as alpha power minus n, but I will see this as 1 by alpha to the power n. Fine, if it is so. You can do that. You can still have positive power of n by making this alpha as 1 by alpha. But there is another thing that is missing here. What is in negative time exponential, you have a minus sign, which is missing here. Okay. So instead of looking at it from the point of positive exponential, negative exponential, if we do it uh, by definition of Z-transform, what happens? And if we treat it as the positive powers, uh, if we treat it as an exponential if, with reference to this particular function, so sorry, this, with, with reference to this result, if we have to solve, that also is possible. By definition, also we can do. By reference to that standard transform, also we can do. Okay. So let's see now by definition how it looks like. So this is by definition means by using the formula. By definition, this is the basic formula that we have for finding out the Z transform. Okay. Now uh, let's just substitute this x of n in this place. Which is done like this. Okay, everybody. Now, now, what you do is you have to again change the summation. So can anybody can everybody change it yourself? Okay, and to change the summation, what is that you need to be looking at? You need to be looking at this. I don't say what is what characteristics of this you need to look into. Okay, I've told that many a times. Can you now do it yourselves? Everybody. So we're learning. Let's focus. Let's learn. Let's be positive about what we are doing. Okay. The things will fall in place. Don't bother. We are learning. We're doing good. Okay. Done, everybody. Yeah, what would be the next step if it is so? so? You need to look at which characteristics of this, the range of this. What is the range of this unit step function? That is u of minus n minus 1. The range of this is minus infinity to minus 1. Minus infinity to minus 1. So over minus infinity to minus 1, this is 1. So what you would do, you would change this limits of the summation to minus infinity to minus 1. All negatives, all negative ends, except 0, mind you. Okay, and substitute this 1 over that. This is what you've done. Okay, in the same step what they've done, there is a z, there is an alpha, and both alpha and z have minus n as the power that's the common power we have for both alpha and z that's why that minus n is taken common in the power okay till here everybody now i want you to go ahead from this point on so we have solved this problem before we have solved the summation before so what you need to do with this summation you need to bring this summation 
into the standard form okay so can you do that yourselves everybody go on i've explained that to you before okay let's see how many of you have learned it bringing the summation to the standard form i'll just tell it fast let's see how many of you can follow me let's take this activity concentrate everybody yeah see yeah this needs to be brought to the standard form n equal to 0 to infinity i want this to be 0 to infinity everybody understand that that minus infinity to minus 1 what we have is not a standard summation limits i want those summation limits to be going from 0 to infinity okay first of all they are minus right let's try eliminate that minus so to eliminate this minus sign what did we do substitute n equal to minus m first step okay if you substitute n equal to minus m what happens everybody write down that substituting n equal to minus m do that everybody yourselves so substituting n equal to minus m is to get rid of this negative signs here to get rid of this negative signs hope everybody is following my instructions so this is what i am asking you to do with that summation yeah what happens if n is substituted by minus m n would become m okay and here were minus signs right so those minus signs are taken off now and here was a minus n and that minus n would become plus n let's see this 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 is being replaced by 1 and infinity and this is n that is what is meaning of it and this minus n is replaced by plus n because n is minus n fine now infinity we got zero we still don't have okay it's going from infinity to one let's let's try do it from one to infinity is it possible if we interchange this will it make any harm to the summation there no the summation has got no effect if we interchange the limits of summation but yes if it is integration you need to be careful if you are interchanging the limits of integration then you need to attach a negative sign okay so that is not the case with the summation so you can easily change the summation limits interchange rather the summation limits like this now what is the concern here the concern here is i want zero to infinity but i have you yeah, know one to infinity so how to make this zero to infinity everybody i have given you that technique i have given you that technique let's see how many of you have remember that can you do it yourselves how to make this zero to infinity is the question everybody so how can we see a zero here we can see a zero here if this one is shifted to the left so how would this lower limit look like now after shifting this one to the left the lower limit would look like m minus 1 equal to 0 m minus 1 equal to 0 this is what i wanted you to do why i want 0 to infinity right so to have that 0 to infinity i just shifted that one on the right hand side to the left hand side of the lower limit and it looked like m minus 1 equal to 0 now so we are going from 0 to infinity so we have come up to that but what is bothering that what's bothering there is so see this is not a variable this is with some variable minus 1 so which again is not acceptable to be a standard format so i need one variable i don't need i can have a k i can have an n i cannot have n minus 1 or k minus 1 or m minus 1 okay so what needs to be done if it is that 
what needs to be done if it is that substitute m minus 1 as k substitute m minus 1 as k if you substitute m minus 1 as k what would you do with this m here m minus 1 is k means okay m would be what m would be this one it take on this side so it would become k plus 1 so in this place you substitute k so substituting k in this place would make this m become k plus 1 following that okay so that looks like this okay and uh, now there are two such alpha zs okay one alpha z is to the power k another alpha z is to the power 1 so alpha z to the power 1 is taken out alpha z to the power 1 is taken out and only this much is remaining so so don't you think this is in the standard form now yes this is in the standard form now in place of a we have alpha z and alpha z would be less than 1 or assuming this as an entity less than 1 how can i write this particular summation it's 1 by 1 minus a right so it looks like this so the standard summation is this because of the standard summation x of z is given by alpha z by 1 minus alpha z Yeah. Alpha z is here. So this can be given as one minus alpha z. That's why one minus one minus alpha z is what is the summation. And alpha z was taken out. So along with this and this, it happens to be this. Understand that? Now how to see the ROC? There is no z inverse here. This is immediately after the summation we are taking. So this is what we have got immediately after the summation. So ROC, how to find out the ROC? ROC is found out, okay, by saying the magnitude of the denominator has to be greater than zero. The magnitude of denominator is greater than zero because that is when your x of z would be a finite entity, okay. That's why we have taken the magnitude of the denominator greater than zero, which means Alpha z, the magnitude of alpha z is less than one, or z is less than one by alpha. Understand that? Okay, it's one by alpha. Now, this is what is the result we have got. Get this, everybody? X of z equal to Alpha z by one minus alpha z, whose ROC is this magnitude z less than one minus alpha. Understand this point? Okay. This problem is important. Okay, because we are learning how to deal with that summation, how to deal with this particular summation. If you understand how to deal with this summation, okay, rest everything is uh, easy. Okay. So ROC. <clears throat> You have to. You, you should know how to deal with the summation, and also you should know how to find out the ROC. Two simple things. You have to. Fine. Okay. This is how we obtain the x of z. See the next sequence. So seeing this sequence, what do you remember? What type of sequence is this? It's a finite sequence, first of all. Okay. Right-sided sequence we have seen. Left-sided sequence we have seen. We have seen double-sided sequence also, and this forms an example of a double-sided sequence, isn't it? Okay. What is this minus two here? What is this arrow indicating? If this arrow is pointing to minus two, okay, and it indicates that this minus two is the zeroth sample. If this is zeroth sample, where do you think x of n is starting and where do you think it is ending so it is starting at minus 1 minus 2 it starts at minus 2 1 2 3 so it starts at minus 2 and goes till 
one needs to understand and you need not have to bother about your roc at all roc is something standard for this why do i say roc is standard for this because it is two sided two sided if it is left sided sequence it is entire z pen except infinity if it is right sided sequence it is entire z pen except z equal to 0 if it is two sided sequence it is entire z pen except z equal to 0 and z equal to infinity so roc is something that we can readily say for this but what is x of that so next we found out again by this particular equation okay t the summation range why the summation range this because this x of n is ranging from minus 2 to plus 3 what is x of minus 2 x of minus 2 is 5 so it's 5 into z to the power what two because it's minus of minus two it becomes so that is one term plus n is equal to minus one term plus n equal to zero term plus n equal to one term like that this summation is written understand this and why is this between minus here because there is a summation because the sample is minus two so because of the sample value this is becoming minus understand so we have positive powers of z okay as well as negative powers of z okay that's why roc is entire z plane except z equal to 0 and z equal to infinity why we are leaving z because if z is 0 x of z is infinity and also we are leaving Also, we are leaving z equal to infinity because z is equal to infinity means x of z would be infinite. So, if you see for this negative powers of z, if z is zero, this is infinity. For this positive powers of z, if z is infinite, x of z is infinite. So, leave those values of z which would make x of z infinite. So, there are two values of z which would make x of z infinite. That is z equal to zero and z equal to infinity. Except that all other values of z or entire z plane. would give you roc so this is something that we have seen for right sided sequence understand that okay so i think uh, we can stop with this uh, you start giving your uh, attendance now okay your 40 people uh, start giving your attendance now in your chat window okay and uh, I hope I can uh, talk to few people because I have uh, two minutes today. Yeah. To whom I can talk? Anybody who would like to raise your hand yourself, or uh, let me give you an option to unmute yourself. So those who are who want to unmute yourself and ask me something or talk to me something about signals and systems, you can uh, start doing. you can unmute yourself and you can make any comment if you have i have given you an option to unmute yourself you can unmute anybody so if there is nobody i have to unmute and ask you Yeah, Arun is there, man. Arun, can I talk to you, man? Mother, what Arun? Arun is there? Yes, sir. Yeah, Arun. Here, pa, hey, follow my journey, na pa. Ah, sir. Parvayla, kali, kali, bo don. Sir, sal sal par ta gala, sir. Last, last, in dala. Hey, ke mat, hey, ke mar be kon ta. ಅದು ನೋಟ್ಸ್ ನೋಡ್ತಿದ್ದೀರಾ ಅಲ್ಲಿ ಇರೋದು ಗೂಗಲ್ ಕ್ಲಾಸ್ ರೂಮ್ ಗೂಗಲ್ ಕ್ಲಾಸ್ ರೂಮ್ ಅಲ್ಲಿ ಇದೀರಲ್ಲ ನೀವು ಗೂಗಲ್ ಕ್ಲಾಸ್ ರೂಮ್ ಹೋಗ್ಬಿಟ್ಟು ಪಿ ಡಿ ಎಫ್ ಡಾಕ್ಯುಮೆಂಟ